this is just unbelievable. We have over 500 people registered for this webinar. So we had to upgrade our webinar software license to be able to accommodate everybody. This number just blows my mind because, you know, if you get a group of 20 laundry owners together, hey, that's a fun retreat. If you get 50 people get together, that's an event. You get 100 people together, and that's something like you may have missed it, or you know, that's you got to be there. And so for us to have 500 people and even more, thousands more will catch us on YouTube later. This is just this is an event, and what makes it is you. And it's your engagement, the questions that you ask during the webinar, the energy, all of that. We're having about one person per second pouring in right now. So that's kind of why also in the beginning of these webinars, you'll see I'm kind of talking about other things, giving shout outs to different companies um, that, or, or not just companies, but just industry, uh, things going on in the industry. Because, you know, I don't want people to miss the, the webinar, but at the same time for the people who came here on time or got here on time and all that, I want to make your time um, where you're getting something in return. So I really appreciate you taking the time for attending this webinar. It means it means a lot to us. So thank you. And we put a lot of work into this webinar to make it worth your time. So I hope you get a lot out of it. That's that's the goal. All right. So first off, I want to give a shout out to Facebook. All right. And to there's a strong, thriving laundry community on Facebook and these groups. And I've got three of them listed right here, but there's more. And so these groups had about 400, 200, 500 members, not even that long ago. And you could see the numbers now. There's thousands of people engaged, having conversations online in these Facebook groups. So I know some people may not be big fans of Facebook. If you're not, just create a dummy account and join these groups. So join Facebook for these groups. And if you're on Facebook, join these groups. So there's the Laundromat Owner Showcase, which is run by Lawrence Cohen. <clears throat> He's an author for American Coin Op, and it's just great conversations, but they all are. There's Laundromat How To, Laundromat Owners. So again, the most valuable resource in the laundry community is all of us. And I just want to you know, encourage everybody to get involved, join the conversation, you'll learn a ton. Also want to give a shout out to the Coin Laundry Association. So they've had a busy year last year. So they talked. So some of the things that they've been lobbying for is number one, getting laundromats marked as an essential business. So remember, with the whole COVID thing, a lot of stores and restaurants and everything closed down, and laundromats stayed open. We were de declared an essential business because it's everybody's right and dignity to have clean clothes, and that's the message Coin Laundry Association spread, uh, which is true. And there were some states that didn't get the memo and they wanted to close down laundromats. And Brian Wallace, the president of the Coin Laundry Association, was on the phone with their legislators, letting them know, you do not want to close down laundromats. That's the disenfranchises people. So we were open. And that may be over and there's more businesses open. But guess what? Laundromats have, are now always remembered as one of the three places that stayed open. So like banks and laundromats, and that increased the value of your laundromat because there's a lot of money out there. There's a lot of investor money, and they're thinking, do I want to open up a subway or a restaurant or this or that, which may have closed down, or do I want something that's recession-proof and pandemic-proof, okay? So, um, so everybody's benefited from that. Um, some of the other things they went to bat for us on is coin modification, and that's an ongoing battle. So they, the Mint wants to change or is talking about changing the metallurgy of quarters, which would affect all of your change machines, and it would cost the industry billions of dollars to um, re-outfit all the laundromats. Uh, they went to bat for the coin shortage, sales tax on wash and fold. So some states pay sales tax on wash and fold, most don't. And Coin Laundry Association's helping to make sure that most don't. And finally, just a little off topic, but this quote down here below, I just thought it was too good not to share. And I got this from Jordan Berry's podcast where he interviewed Brian Wallace. 
So if you haven't heard Jordan Berry's podcast, it's great, a uh, really good resource. And so this quote is based upon a lot of research. And, and so every word is carefully crafted and it's worth jotting down because it should be infused in all of your marketing and messaging and website and the way you think about how you're providing value to your customers. So here's the quote, laundromat customers want time savings and convenience in a clean, safe environment that is close to home. So that's the message. So when you're talking about your brand new machines, you might really like the, the brand or this or that and the size or all those different things. But from the customer's point of view, you want to let them know what the benefit is, that it spins faster, it extracts the water faster, so your clothes dry faster, so you're in and out of the laundromat faster. So it's all about cleanliness and time savings and convenience. And that message is also very strong for wash and fold. So when you're focused on any of your operations, any of your marketing, what could you do to make wash and fold more convenient? Okay, so that's something to always be running through the back of your mind. Okay, uh, just also want to give a shout out to Highmark Manufacturing. They make uh, laundry furniture and bulkheads and folding tables, commercial grade, and they're laundry owners. And the reason I'm a shout out to them, they, we got a phone call. They want to sign up, use their software. We make wash and fold software for point of sale and pickup and delivery. And, and so, uh, so they signed up with us. And that was a big moment for us, I think, because, you know, I always see Highmark advertising in American Coin Op and, and Planet Laundry and some of the industry magazines. So, and they're laundry people. So when they went with our solution for their wash and fold and pick up and delivery um, solution, that, that was a big compliment. So I just wanted to, you know, pay it back or pay it forward. Uh, they're a great company and quality product. Um, this over here is Smart Wi-Fi. It's another one of our cl uh, clients who pr has a, just a fantastic uh, Wi-Fi solution which and we're using this at super studs and it just makes things so much easier so if you're and there's a lot to this but i'll try and make it simple one so if you're sharing your wi-fi which you should you should offer free wi-fi for everybody at your laundromat um this gets their contact information and it also gets permission to reach out to them to market to them and you'll know like in all my webinars i always ask you know what is your most valuable resource what is your most valuable asset and it's your contact list it's your rolodex so how many people go into your laundromat who you don't even know who they are so this is a great great way of getting their information because when they sign in it gets their their gmail or their uh, facebook and and permission to marketing to them and you could send text messages to them and it is phenomenal because now you could do promos, you could set up these marketing campaigns automatically if they haven't come in for a period of time or after their first visit. So you're, you've got this huge marketing system on steroids. Um, in addition, we also have an apartment complex right next to our laundromat and they're using our free, they were using our free Wi-Fi and just bogging down our network. And this system gives you full control so you could say, hey, this guy's downloading a whole bunch of stuff and he's on it every single day. So you got this really powerful dashboard. So I just click on, the, on that person and I disable access and they're gone. So it's got really good controls. So yeah, we're very happy with it and it's um, helped with customer retention. All right, and then finally, just wanted to um, mention Ozone. There's a whole webinar on this. So I figure it's worth spending a few minutes on this just because it's helped out our laundromat a lot. So that's our um, laundromat, the counter in the bottom left corner. And then this, I believe is over at the Soapy Fair at another laundromat. Um, so ozone is a natural sanitation system that kills viruses, kills mold, kills bacteria, and, and, it's, and it makes the clothes softer and smell better. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a poll. I'm just curious, and this is, do you have an ozone system or have one on its way? Because even if you order one, 
it does take time to arrive. I mean, these it's a um, you know it, it just takes a little bit of time. So I'm just curious what the makeup of the audience is. Keep in mind, everybody who is on this webinar is on the cutting edge, and so and so what I mean by that is you're um, spending your time educating yourself, learning more, and so this these numbers may not be reflective of all the laundry owners in general. In fact, they're not. So the, this year, the, um, so it turns out about one out of five or one out of four people uh, who are on this webinar have an ozone system. And so let me go ahead and hide that. All right, so as far as our personal experience with ozone, the first people who noticed it was our employees. Uh, and this stuff works. I always get questions, is this, is this stuff real or not? I have a personal ozone system at home just for a single washing machine. And I got one of those mission masks made in China. The dye was just super strong where you knew you had to wash this before you wore it because otherwise you're going to get a headache. And so on the personal ozone system, it had a, a wand and, a, and I just sprayed it with the ozonated water. It let it dry, and that toxic dye smell was gone. It smelled fresh. And the only thing I did was spray it with ozonated water. So this stuff works. Um, the first experience we had with ozone was we had a dog wash at our laundromat, and the place would smell wet, like wet dog. And so we had a ozone generator that just did the air. So you turn it on like a space heater, evacuate, or leave the premise for that area. And and then it got rid of the, the dog smell. So it takes out smoke smell and dog smell and cigarette smell. It's really fantastic. But in any case, in this um, we this has helped us get a whole bunch of commercial accounts. Our payment on it it's a three year program and it's a thousand bucks or so per month. And it's a pretty big system for us because you have a hundred washing machines. And meanwhile. We got one account that pays us 500 bucks a week, a commercial account. And we got actually a whole bunch more. We got all these assisted living. In fact, the fastest growing segment for commercial laundry for Wash and Fold is, is the assisted living. It's the doctors. It's the nurses. It's some of the, even like the shelters or homeless places. And so you're seeing, a, and all of those things have one thing in common. They really value sanitation, ozone sanitation. So when you're competing, everybody else is competing on price and they say, hey, what do you do special? And if you just say, well, I wash and I fold, okay, well, a lot of places do that. Um, neat part about ozone is now you could stand confident with your pricing because you offer something that 77%, actually way more than that. It's probably, um, you know, 90% at least of laundromats do not have. So, uh, so just anyways, if you're interested in that, we do have a program where you could save 500 bucks off the cost. So just go to curbsidelaundries.com forward slash demo um, and just say, hey, I want more information about the ozone system. And we'll also share with you our marketing campaigns that we do because the ozone system by itself, it only does so it works. But the second component to it is marketing. You got to let people know your self-serve, your wash and fold, your pickup and delivery, you got to let them know how, you know, what the benefits are. You have to educate your customers or else they won't get the benefit. Um, and so that's been a big help for us. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started now. Uh, we've got a ton of people online right now. Um, so we're going to be doing wash and fold the fundamentals. Our goal is to help you just do a better job and to build up your business and to improve your process. And we're going to be sharing how we do things. Uh, we do, so we are, my brother and I started up curbside laundries. And so we provide software, point of sale system, a pickup and delivery solution. And we do websites for laundromats as well that just are phenomenal. They're, they're great. Um, so, but the main purpose of this, laundry, of this is not go buy your software. The main purpose of this is to educate everybody to bring the whole industry up because we've learned a ton from other people and we just want to share back. 
and it's um you know it's, it's we've gained so much information just talking to other people and we want to lift the industry up because if laundromats are mixing up orders and making a mess of things with wash and fold and somebody loses their clothes or gets somebody else's undergarments back with their clothes sent back to them do you think they're going to do wash and fold again maybe not so we want to just everybody just to do a great great job All right, so um, I'm gonna open up another poll saying, what services do you provide? And this poll, you could go ahead and check. I believe you should be able to check as many boxes as you want. And so if you got self-serve laundromat, wash and fold, pick up and delivery. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the makeup is. All right, so because of just time, I'm gonna close the poll. So if you haven't responded yet, now's a good time. Okay, so what's interesting is we have more people doing wash and fold than a self-serve laundromat. I'll get to that in a second. So most of you have a laundromat, 84% of you on the line, 93% are doing wash and fold, 61% pick up and delivery. So how is wash and fold higher than self-serve laundromat? That was unheard of not that long ago. And the reason being is there's a bunch of people doing pickup and delivery and wash and fold and don't have a laundromat. We get calls from them all the time. Now, if you have a laundromat, you have a big advantage with wash and fold and growing your pickup and delivery. You have a huge advantage I talk about that more in pick up in my pick up and delivery webinar, but it comes from having a physical location. People are able to find you on Google easier. So just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on that. And and it turns out most people are doing wash and fold, which is interesting. I wasn't sure if people are looking to get into wash and fold on the webinar or not. So that'll help guide everything. Um, right over here, this is also one of the reasons why I want to do this webinar. And so this was a post on Facebook. Good news is we had our first six order day and they were talking about pickup and delivery. This past Monday, we had three new clients. However, uh, sorry, we got six orders today. The bad news is three clients said they got their clothes that were not theirs or were missing clothes. So, and what did we do wrong? So, so that's, you know, when you're starting to do wash and fold, most places who are doing wash and fold without a strong online presence are making between 500 and 2500 bucks per month and that's gross so that's not even really what they're making that's just gross and they're doing it to really pay help pay for the attendant and when somebody drops off their clothes they just toss it in the wash and that's you know what we did when we first started so but then what happens is you get busier does that, do you even have a process if you're just throwing it in the wash? And if you're hoping that you develop a process when you get a whole bunch of orders all at one time, that's a lot of hope. <laughs> like, you know, you may get lucky, but chances are there's a possibility you're going to have mixed up orders. And this gets even more combobulated when you're doing pickup and delivery, because what happens is your truck goes out you pick up six or 10 orders all at once and you have to unload them. And how do you keep the orders separate? It's not so easy. I mean, it's hard just to do it in my own household. Like, who does this belong to? So it's impossible if you don't have a system. You will make mistakes unless you have a really strong process in place. So that's um, a big part. And at Super Suds, these photos are from our laundromat at Super Suds. And in the bottom left photo, there's actually a row of three rows of shelves behind those carts. You can't even see that. And that's just one section of the wash and fold storage area. And, and then on the right side, you got the driver who unloaded a bunch of stuff. And, and so, but it didn't always start off this way. And even before it started off this way, or before it got this way, we had customers who were trying to find their clothes in the back room because we couldn't find their orders. And if you're spending a long time digging out, trying to find the customer's order, customer comes in, you know, that's 
where people could lose confidence in your operations. It could lead to one-star Yelp reviews. So it's just super important to have the process dialed down so it so the customer's experience is fantastic. And my brother, yeah, let me get into this right over here. This is our wash and fold monthly revenue. And my brother, Aaron, he took over the operations at the family laundromat, Supersuds, in 2010. And he started growing things. You could see even 2011 is way higher than 2010. And 2012 was way higher. I mean, if you look at it from a percentage point of view, it's almost 20%. It looks like nothing now, but these were big changes. And he knew that this was a growing industry. People want convenience. And he also, so he started looking for point of sale systems, couldn't find anything that would meet our needs because most of the point of sale systems were designed for restaurants or dry cleaners, or they knew nothing about laundry and it just wasn't managing the process. And you kind of have to like finagle with it and it created its own issues. And we tried different systems. It just didn't work. And my brother said, if we don't come up with a software solution, we're going to be getting, we're going to be taking a beating online. Our rep, as much as we're bringing in new customers, we're going to be losing them or we're going to have to spend more money on advertising because when they see our reputation, they're going to renege and go somewhere else. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up a poll over here. And this is who owns your wash and fold business at your laundromat? Is it the laundromat owner? Is it an employee or a third party? Or you don't offer wash and fold? So we'll just let that come in. And yeah, so go ahead and get your answers in. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and then share it. Okay, so here we go. So about 3%, it was 4% right before I hit share, um, have an employer third party doing it. I'm not going to spend too much time on that since it's only 3%, but I will say we used to do that too, and it's leaving a lot of money on the table because they're not going to invest to grow the business like you would. And meanwhile, you know, they're, they're not going to take ownership of it. And, and meanwhile, if they do a bad job, it's going to reflect negatively on your business. So I, I really uh, recommend for people um, to take ownership of it if you haven't already. Uh, don't be surprised if an employer third party is running the show that you know, when you take when you do take over wash and fold, I, I hate to say it, but sometimes that person who, you know, they may be used to collecting the 30 bucks every time. And, you know, that's kind of a shift. Um, so but in any case, you, it is something just to kind of keep in mind. So it just depends on everybody's situation. Um, but for us, it really helped out just taking over the that part of the business, especially since we bought the building, the machines, all that stuff. But I get it. There's also a time factor. All right, so one of the reasons you'll also see why did we have the sudden increase in 2015 to 2021? And the reason being is, um, so you could see that increase right over there where it just goes way, way up. That's because we added pickup and delivery. So, and that is a growing, growing market. So let me go ahead and show you this. This is at our laundromat for just pickup and delivery. And and so let me, um, <clears throat> so in regards to this, the purple is 2017, and then the green is, you know, so business doubled or tripled, you know, from in one year, and then it went up another big chunk in 2019 and a whole bunch of chunks in 2009, 2020. And then with COVID, it really accelerated an existing trend. So it, to me, it kind of nails on a chalkboard when I hear, oh, pickup and delivery just really grew, uh, like it's now a thing because of COVID, or, and that's not true. It's, this was a growing thing before the pandemic just accelerated existing trends. And I just, you know, there's a lot of people who now have different shopping styles, they buy more stuff on Amazon, 
they're outsourcing, they're saving time and convenience because people are busy as you could be. So if you haven't, if you're not thinking about pickup and delivery, I one of the reasons we're doing this podcast as well or webinar is we want you to have a top, top, top notch process, which we'll get to. Um, so then that way you're ready to do a pickup and delivery because we've got a whole bunch of clients whose businesses just took way off and then they're learning trial by fire to keep everything in, in check, you know, in process. And so it is a good idea to really get your wash and fold down and then add this because there are some ways of growing your business quickly, um, you know, and then it's different for everybody, but and it, it does take time to, to grow things. But the, I saw on the coin laundry association forum, there was somebody asked, I've got a laundromat that's really hard to see. What do you recommend as far as marketing? How do I get the word out? And, and so somebody suggested putting a hot air balloon above their laundromat. And in fact, we actually did that at Super Suds. It lasted a few weeks until the city came down after us and we had to take that down. But that's another story. But, you know, I do like the idea. The goal is you want to be visible. You want people to be able to see you. And more importantly, you want people who are looking for your service to be able to see you. So how do you do that? And so it all comes down to your web presence. I talk about this more in detail in some of the other webinars. But it's so important. It's so foundational to your success that I have to mention it again. So on the right side, you can see a search that says wash and fold near Culver City. And these are the search results. And all of the ones that are in red, the red box and highlighted, those are websites that we made for our clients. And so you got Tiffany's Laundromat, 310 Laundromat at the top. You got Laundry Gator, Tiffany's Laundromat mentioned again. And Rosie Washington mentioned two more times, okay? And so the only people, then you got Rinse on there. Well, Rinse is a national company, and that's hard to beat. They got millions of dollars of advertising, and our mom and pop laundromat clients beat them out. And then the other one is, yeah, it is Yelp. So Yelp, I don't really consider competition, because people go to Google to find search results. They're not going to Google to go to Yelp to go to the website. And then and this is a very competitive area near, you know, Los Angeles. So for for a lot of places there's yes, so in any case, I urge everybody at the end of this webinar that when you have your browser open, you see that icon on the bottom, right click on that and tap new incognito window. Do a search in Google and try and find your laundromat. <clears throat> typing in stuff a customer would type in, like wash and fold near me or wash and fold near that city. So, and see who shows up. It's amazing how many people are in business and it'd be like if you never looked at the outside of your store and you just hope it looks nice. We were doing a, a demo for somebody who was, who owns a bunch of laundromats, very successful. He's doing great. And, um, but when, when we asked, we say, hey, we can't find your website online. Um, it turned out, he goes, well, my Google AdWords, my budget must have ran out. Well, how much do you spend per month? $1,000. So you have somebody spending $1,000 a month. And as soon as his budget runs out, because every time somebody clicks on it, he loses part of his budget, three or four bucks, then he's no longer findable. So he's successful through just throwing a ton of money at it. It's no way to do it. So if you could get listed at no cost, you know, where you're ranking really well, and it doesn't matter if we're doing it or somebody else is, you just need to do it. You got to pay attention to your online presence. Can people find you online? Because all those commercial accounts that I'm talking about and all those residential customers, they're not driving around downtown whatever city you're in trying to find a laundromat that does wash and fold no way that's not how these customers find you so if you want to grow your wash and fold you need they find you online they do a search online and they find you or not so 
this is just so important. There's a lot to this. I could spend like 10 hours on how to increase your web presence. And we do that for our clients as well. Um, like we have internal webinars and workshops where we talk about all these things. And there's no silver bullet. It's chipping away at it. There's a lot of things you got to do. Um, uh, if there's one silver bullet to do, everybody would just know what that one thing is. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And if you do hire a company, you want to see their scoreboard. Okay, this is ours on the right. All right, we beat everybody else out there. But if you're hiring a marketing company, and I just think this is good advice, say, what have you done for other people, for other laundromats? All right. So another common thing with hiring with Wash and Fold is, and this is one of the reasons why people don't get into Wash and Fold, and I get it, you got to hire employees, and and it is hard right now to hire the right talent because there's a lot of people on unemployment, and drivers are getting paid more than ever. If you're having a tough time finding drivers, that may be because you're not paying enough because they are getting offers from other places. Just, and you should do a search. Pretend you're a candidate and see what you're competing against. Don't just say, well, I could, you know, I want to pay $14 and just assume that's the price. You've got to do a little bit of research. Um, so here are three different places to find people. Indeed.com, Facebook.com, and Snagajob.com. In addition, you want to, a lot of people don't show up. So I always tell people the our appointment is not confirmed. We've had some no-shows, and I'm not going to meet you at the laundromat unless we text ahead of time the same day. So please text me the morning of and confirm with me that we're meeting at 11 o'clock. Otherwise, I won't be there. And then sometimes they don't text at, you know, in the morning. That's test number one. And then after their time they're supposed to text, and I text them, say, hey, are we still on at 11? And so that way you don't waste time because you're going to have a lot of no-shows. And there's a lot of weird people out there. They're, they'll take the whole application. They'll, can't wait till my first day of work. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hiring me. And then they don't show up for their first day of work. So go figure. So, it's, so when you do have people that are good, take care of them because they are part of the lifeblood of your laundromat. So... Um, so, and they're the face, they're the people your customers are interacting with. So that's just so important um, to to do that. And it's tough right now, but you just got to keep at it. It's a numbers game. All right. So over here is the drop-off counter. The original drop-off counter at our laundromat, Super Suds, is on the left. So it's pretty humbling. And then our new drop-off counter is on the right. So we made a few improvements. All right, so number one, if you notice, that black bin right there is where the clothes go. We don't, you know, a lot of people may have really big bags, and they might not be the biggest people, and they gotta lug that laundry bag over the counter. You know, imagine if they did that at the airport. <laughs> you know, like, stand back. <laughs> so that's something to pay attention to if you could lower make it easier for your customers where they could just drop the clothes in there. There's a scale underneath that bin. And then using our software, you just tap add weight and it grabs the weight automatically. So makes it really easy. Um, the other thing you want to pay attention to is the signage. And what is the experience when somebody walks into the laundromat? So Steve Jobs, when he opened up the Apple stores, he wanted it so from the front door, you could take in the entire store and you knew where everything was. Now that was transformative. Before then it was department stores and their goal was the opposite. Their goal is to keep you lost. You can't find the exit. <laughs> you can't, you know, you're like, you have no idea where anything is. You have to go around the building to get to the right escalator. All right, so that's not how you want to do it. You want to go more keeping it simple. So that way when somebody comes in, they know exactly where the wash and fold is, and they could get in, get out, and that's part of the customer experience. In addition, you'll see right over here, this is a, an Excel or spreadsheet in a way. I recommend you do something like this. And we still have it over here on this wall, right? So what that is, 
is you're going to get a lot of people who drop off their clothes and they're going to say, how much is this? Now, you don't necessarily want to ring them up and do the whole order. They just want to know how much is it going to cost me? So we just drop it in the scale. We see the weight. And that spreadsheet or the table says, okay, 10 pounds, that's going to be 18 bucks. All right. So that's a very handy thing to have. Quick reference. You'll use it every day. All right. So here is the scale. So a lot of you may be in the market for a scale, or you might want to replace the one you got. And so when you buy a new scale, you want to make sure it's USB. That way, when you do buy software that's made for laundromats, it could grab the weight automatically from the scale. So that saves a lot of time and mistakes. And you'll also make more money. Okay, so here's how. Number one, one of the most common, every time an attendant touches anything, a mistake could happen. You know, it's just over time, mistakes happen. So when they're handwriting all the weight, that number might be a zero or it might be an eight. So handwriting causes a lot of miscommunication. And weight is directly associated with a price. So they make a mistake there, that's a problem. The second thing is this way it has a decimal and there could be more than one bag. So it's really helpful to just tap add weight and the software adds it for you versus pulling out the calculator or just rounding up or rounding down. Both are bad and one's illegal. <laughs> so it's good to be accurate and, and every order has a decimal, right? Nine out of 10 do. So it's good to be accurate and, and make money on the whole enchilada. All right. Um, one last thing, when you are buying a scale, don't do the serial to USB because those don't work with, the, with lot, most of the software out there. It needs to be true USB from beginning to end. So I know a little bit in the weeds, but I, I don't want you to waste your money. All right. So I should have done a poll over here. I'm curious how many of you accept credit cards and different payment options, but this is at our laundromat. So it could be pretty valuable because a lot of people do not accept credit cards. You know, when people are buying our point of sale, we didn't even realize it. One of the benefits is they're now accepting credit cards. We just kind of took that for granted. And so in one month, we're doing a total of about $20,000 of in-store wash and fold. And on the left, you could see the number of cash, the volume of cash transactions. And on the right, you could see the volume of credit card transactions. So if you're only doing cash, how many people decide not to even come to your laundromat or they go there once, but they don't have cash on them and everything's, they don't want to go to the bank. You know, everything's kind of more difficult now. And if you make things easier for your customers, more convenient, remember that Brian Wallace quote, convenience, credit card makes it more convenient. So I urge you, you know, we don't care if you buy our software or somebody else's, but you would do yourself a service by accepting credit cards. And I know sometimes there's the merchant account fees that could turn people off. Well, you're better off bumping up your prices and providing convenience. This is not a race to the bottom. This is a race. This is a premium product. They're okay with paying money. All right. So I'm going to open up another quote or another poll saying, yeah, let me go ahead and launch it. Do your wash and fold customers pay up front or pay when they pick up their clothes? And the third choice is, well, sometimes they do this and sometimes they do that. All right, so we're getting a lot of different uh, responses. I'm going to go ahead and close that and share that poll. And we have about 60% of people who voted. All right. So one third of everybody here has everybody pay up front. And I applaud you. I'll get to why in a second. You probably already know why. I think that's a good idea. Then 16% do pay at pickup. And then one half of you, it's kind of both. All right. Sometimes they pay up front. Sometimes they pay when they pick up their clothes. All right. So there's benefits to both. All right. And there's cons to both. So I want to just illustrate what these benefits are. 
and let's see. Um, all right, so if you pay upfront, that is what I recommend. Have your customers pay upfront. And the reason being is, and let me go ahead and hide that poll, is that way you're guaranteed you get paid. So getting paid is a big deal, and you are guaranteed to get paid if they pay upfront. That's pretty good right by itself. The second reason to have customers pay upfront is they're faster to pick up their clothes. So the pay up pickup people, they are slow to pick up their clothes. I mean, it could depend on your area and all that, but at least where we're at, I think people are waiting to get another paycheck sometimes before they pick up their clothes and the clothes sometimes just sit there. And, and sometimes they never pick up their clothes and then guess what? You just did a whole bunch of work for free and folding clothes takes a lot of time. So why are you doing it for free? Now, for the 51% who do sometimes pay up front and sometimes pay at pickup, there's a problem there. And one of the most common problems, in fact, it's almost always, unless you have some type of system in place, is you wind up returning the clothes before they're paid for. All right, so what do I mean by that? Customer comes in to pick up their clothes, and the attendant thinks they already paid for it because half the other people paid for it and they return the clothes. And then the owner comes in and says, wait, they didn't pay. And, and I've heard of stories where they're on the, the owner's on the phone calling a customer who already got their clothes back and saying, hey, you owe us money. And it gets ugly. And why are you in that situation? So, you know, you could create different systems like a stamp that says paid, all that stuff. And but guess what? People are going to forget to put the stamp on it. And now you're fighting with the customer. There's no stamp here. <laughs> you know, so it's so one thing with our software, it's made just for wash and fold. And so we have a pay a pickup in there, and it's nearly impossible to return the clothes without it being paid for. It has a big red pay button at the time, making it clear that they have not paid yet. So that is something to keep in mind. So I do recommend for the sometimes people. I would convert everybody. I know it's painful, but give people a notice and get them to pay up front. The other thing that we added to our software, and I'm sure they have this and others too, but I just want to tell you about the, you know, this is important. It helps out our laundromat a lot, is express pay. So you see the one that's in green? It says use Visa 0027 on completion. That means that customer has a credit card on file. And that customer, um, it's so great. They come into the laundromat, they know the person's name or they get the person's name and it says, hey, do you want to use the card you have on file? Yep. They drop off their clothes and they go. So yeah, you could print out an estimate if you want, but a lot of these regulars, they know about how much it costs. That's why they left their card on file and they just drop off their clothes, they leave. And going back to the Brian Wallace quote, convenience, convenience, convenience. What's more convenient than that? If you're the consumer and you're, you could go buy a cup of coffee at Starbucks and they know how you like it and they know all these different things and they have your payment information, you just grab your cup and go, would you go anywhere else? So that's what you want to strive for is making that experience more convenient. Um, in addition, there's a lot of discussion. Do you pay, do you have, what about if somebody comes in with wet weight? All right. So the clothes are soiled. If they pay up front, you're charging them on the wet weight. Now, some customers may object, and that's actually why some places do pay when you pick it up because then they're charging based on the dry weight. And so it's a mixed bag. My personal feeling is in that situation, I prefer giving them people the option to pay on the dry weight. And the way we do that is if they keep the credit card on file. So I mean, we've got a dog groomer that comes in and it's about 20 pounds of, you know, these wet towels. And I don't think it'd be fair to charge them an extra 30 bucks because their towels are wet. And they're going to be kind of mad if they, when they get their clothes back, they look at the bill, they weigh it and they're like, hey, you're 20 pounds off. So I would encourage, if you see somebody coming in with some really soiled clothes, I would encourage them, hey, if you keep, if you keep your card on file, we could charge you once your clothes are folded and our software automatically charges 
as soon as the clothes are folded based on the dry weight, even before they come to pick up their clothes. So you get paid as soon as the job is done. And, and so what's neat about that is now you're hooking up the customer and they think you're looking out for them, which you are, but you're also creating a more loyal customer and you're improving their experience because you're keeping the card on file. All right. So one thing to keep in mind, going back to convenience, one way of increasing the convenience for your customers, and this is really important, is you have to remember what your customer preferences are. So this is not just true for pickup and delivery. That's true too. This is also true when they come into your laundromat. So when you are looking at software, or I don't know how you would manage that with paper, maybe you have a big index file system, I don't know. But you want to remember the customer's preferences. So this one, the attendant says, hey, do you want extra downy, Bob? And you could see hearts coming from him because he feels like he's at home. He knows that you know how he likes his clothes. And going back to preferences, you want their preferences to print on the ticket. You don't want Bob picking up his clothes and he's wondering, did you use extra downy or did you not use hot water or whatever his instructions are? You need to communicate to him that the clothes were done the way he wanted them to be done. So don't have him guess if you did or not. Have it on the ticket. You could just handwrite it if you've got handwritten tickets. Yeah, printed tickets, make sure it shows there. It's just, that's almost as important as doing it, is letting them know you did it. Okay, so we talked about how hard it is to hiring talent <clears throat> and finding the right staff. So one of the ways to improve your customer retention or employee retention is tips and gratuity. And so uh, this is um, so this is getting released at curb, to all the curbside clients, um, I think later this month. And what this is is now when customers come in to pay for their orders, they could just tap on the, the kiosk or the screen how much tip they want to leave. Or if, they, if, you, if you don't have a screen that you could share, they could print it up on the ticket and they could just circle the amount. So there's a lot of different ways of collecting the tips. But tips are important. Your, your employees will love it. And one thing regarding tips is as far as sharing the tips and splitting up the tips, we go based upon the number of pounds laundered or you know the hours worked and some go a certain percentage goes to the drivers. And we really encourage splitting it evenly that way based upon productivity versus, versus if they only get a tip, if they do order number 70, yes, they're just gonna grab order number 70 and that gets done first or that gets done better or it gets a special bow. And then the next time that customer comes in, they're like, hey, they didn't fold my clothes the same way as last time. Is that because I didn't leave a tip? Or it took me longer to get my clothes back. So I really encourage to treat all of your customers special and not do the tips by who did that order, but share them between the entire workforce based on how much work they did. Um, another thing is, whatever software you go with, I do like the ability to save tips for future orders and just doing that checkbox. And that's great for pickup and delivery too. And the reason for that is there's a lot of customers to just say, hey, could you just add a five bucks or a couple bucks to each order for a tip? And then it's just saved. And it's just, again, more convenient for them. All right, so over here is binning in order, in order. And this is, comes back to if you're just doing one order at a time and you're throwing it in the wash, then you may not need to do something like this. But as you get busier and if you have a strong website and you're doing the right marketing mix, you're gonna get busy. You know, that's, that's the goal. And, and so you, you may not have the luxury just to throw every order in the washing machine right when you get it. Plus, some people, and we'll get to this in a minute, some people, will want their clothes back sooner. So you can't just do them in order that you receive them. So we put all the dirty orders in these bins right over here. Put them in bags, put them in the bins. We put the tickets inside of the bin. When the tickets were on the outside of the bin, as we're going up and down the aisle, the tickets would fall off. Okay, so this way everything stays in there. Now, why do we do bins? Because one of the common mistakes that we made at Supersuds 
is a bag would fall over and their clothes would spill out. I mean, you could see this bag a customer gave and it's got a hole in it. And that's actually better than some of the other bags we get. And sometimes they try and give you a hamper. I don't want your hamper. So they'll give you all different types of containers. And sometimes the collar, uh, you know, the zip tie at the top is loose and the clothes tip out and you'll have no idea which bag those socks came out of. All right. So, and if somebody else gets somebody else's undergarments with their laundry, you run a very high chance of losing that customer. Even if they got all their clothes back and free extra underwear, they don't want that extra underwear. That's gross. They think their clothes got washed with somebody else's, which I think they probably did. So you want to keep all the orders separate. That is so important. Each customer spends hundreds of dollars per year. So if you mix up two orders, you've just lost close to $1,000 a year, possibly. All right. So so I just want to reiterate throughout this entire wash and fold process, which we'll be diving more into, you need to keep the orders separate. That's paramount. And you're going to have a tendency to say, I know how to do it. I don't need to do it your way. And they'll make mistakes. And you just got to be, this is how we do it. I know you've got a good process, but we need everybody to just follow this process we got over here. Okay. The other part you notice is these bins are on the bottom shelf. Now, these um, shelves are made by global industries, but the bins go on the bottom shelf because they're heavy, and we don't want them on the top shelf and having an accident. All right, same, <clears throat> same day service, and we're going to be going, I think, quite a bit over, but you, there will be a recording, so if you can't catch the whole thing, I understand, but I just want to get all the stuff in here. All right, so same day service. This is when somebody drops off their clothes, and they want to pick up their clothes the same day. So one thing in our software, the way we solve this is we ask the customer, one of the questions we ask is, what time is tomorrow at about the same time okay? And they go, oh, sure, no problem. But some people say, no, I want my clothes back the same day. Well, you got to charge for it. We charge either 25 cents or 35 cents per pound extra. These people are not that price sensitive in most cases because they need their clothes back the same day. Remember, convenient. That's why they're there. It's not about money. It's about convenience. So you need to charge them more. And a lot of new places that are just starting to offer wash and fold, the mentality is, well, we're new. We could do it the same day. So that's why they come here. But it's not scalable. And I want you to scale your business. I want you to get big. And that's just not sustainable to offer everybody same day service. You just can't promise that. And so I would actually, even if you finish their clothes the same day, I wouldn't even tell them until the next day. And then if they want the clothes back the same day, they could pay extra. All right, so that's my recommendation there. So have them pay for convenience. And then as you grow your business, otherwise as you grow your business and you can't do same day for the same price, in their mind, your regular retail price is same day service because that's how you've been doing it. That's what they've been getting. So when you tell them we can't do same day at that price anymore, they're going to be mad. So why even set expectations that you can't sustain over a long term? Do it. The, you know, you're going to grow big. You know, you got to have that stick with that vision. All right. So now tracking each order. So this part is really, really important is you gotta keep the orders separated, all right? So you could see we created the system at Supersets because we had, and I'm sure you've probably had this problem too, customers taking the clothes out of the washing machines, mixing them all together. Now you don't know whose clothes are who. So one of the most important parts of these signs, and they're magnetic, is it says, please do not remove. So that is just key. and because people see that and they're like, oh, okay. And it's not foolproof sometimes, you know, but at least it helps a lot. The second part is it also has an order number on there. And so what we do is we use the dry erase marker and we write on the magnet the order number. Now, step number three is it's really important when you're loading up the machines, both washing machines and drying, and even folding for that matter, but that you only work on one order at a time. 
So what I mean is if Bob's clothes, you're working on Bob's order, you throw all of Bob's clothes into the machines, and then you start the machines, and you label the machines, and you know those two machines are Bob's, and then you go to work on Sally's order right next door, or, you know, on the machine next to it. And you don't want to work on Bob's and Sally's together and then think you're going to remember which one is which, and then, and then write, make up your signs and track it because you're gonna forget whose order is in the middle. It happens all the time. So only, you, that's so common of a mistake. So you have to just do one at a time, label them, and then go to work on the next one. Now on the right, rather than doing magnets, uh, we have a client who did color photocopies. They look nice. And then he laminated them, put magnets on the back, say, you know, and again, he's got the magic words, please do not remove. All right, so that's, uh, that's key. Okay, so this is machine tracking right over here. And I went on Facebook and I asked different laundry owners, how, hey, do you have a, some type of sheet or workbook where you keep track of each order and what machines they're in? And I'll tell you, all three people who responded, these are top, top, top-notch operators. Okay, so they're... They're, they've got a very strong business and they're, they just, they do a good job. And so they take care of these things. That's why they're doing this. That's a lot of work. And most of these machine tracking notebooks, they don't look so nice as these. Most, and, and I tell you the reason why people spend time on this and do this is because orders get mixed up. You, somebody messes up an order. He did the dry on high and you have no idea who worked on it. And you need to be able to talk to the attendant who did it. And, and so there's so many different things that this helps out on. I could go on for 30 minutes why it's a good idea to track what machines they're using, even how much money they're spending, and, and making sure that – or anyways, I, I don't want to spend forever on that, but there's a lot of reasons to machine track. And most of the time, people are using spiral notebooks that with messy handwriting, and then they pay their manager – to go through all of that data and make sense of it. And, and so, and that's very time consuming. How much money are you spending on that? So one thing we have in our software is the machine tracking module. And the, I really should have a line in between the top part and the bottom part. The top part is what the launderer or the attendant uses. The bottom part is a report for the owner. And it's in real time. And the software is in the cloud, so you could access these reports anywhere. All right, so the, dry, the launderer goes ahead and they tap add dryer, and they tap add washer. And so now you know exactly which machines that this person's order is in. And it's so fast, they just tap add dryer. And what's cool about that is it's also collecting a lot of information that the attendant isn't even aware of, or doesn't have to do the data entry for. What I mean by that, when they tap add dryer, tap on the machine number, the, the software is recording which employee just did that. It's tracking the time and the day. It's, tra it's connecting it automatically to that customer. It's connecting it to that order. So it's doing a whole bunch of stuff and making that information usable. Um, in addition, a lot of laundry owners with, with doing wash and fold, they tell their attendants, don't start a new order when you only have an hour left of your shift. Now you got this idle resource that you're paying for every single day. That's not doing anything for a whole hour at the end of their shift, except, you know, maybe helping customers. So over here, what's cool is the new employee comes in and they could pick up where the other person left off. And they know that Matt's order is drying and, or it needs to go into the dryer and here are the washing machines that where his clothes are at. So it really creates a lot of continuity. Then, as far as the report, this number is really important. That's the percentage of money that the attendant used compared to the gross sell of the order, all right? So in this case, and this is just like kind of made up order, so it's not real, but over here, the attendant spent 15 bucks on machines on an $18 order, and you as the owner could go through this report and say, you know, Whoever the employee is, you could say, why did you spend so much money on that order? You know, 
and you know your number is probably going to be closer to about 40 percent so you could just you could even sort it you hit percentage and you could see how much money everybody's spending on each order and if that number is above 40 percent you want to talk to that person and, and talk to them about their machine mix and what are they using the right number of machines for that and you want to really have a tight grip you know and make sure that they're not wasting a lot of money or doing their friends laundry when they should be doing the you know the the your customers laundry all right so over here we got payment options now i'm going to go ahead and open up a poll and how do your and so let me go ahead and launch it and so the poll is how do your employees start the machines all right so you got do they start them with quarters do they start them with tokens do they use a card do they use an app all right so we'll have that coming in and all right we got about 50 percent of people voted and so i'm going to go ahead and close it and share it now remember you guys are the upper crust you know of the laundry industry because you're educating yourself you're you know a lot of people are in a bubble and they're not yeah anyway um you guys are networking with other people and that's so over here we've got half of everybody has their attendance using quarters to start the machines we got about one percent is two percent just a second ago um two, about one percent is using tokens we use tokens at supersuds um and then we got 46 percent using cards and about 15 percent using apps now whatever you're doing one of my recommendations is you need to get the money out of your employees hands because it's just way too tempting you know if you're getting paid you know 10 bucks an hour and it costs eight and a half dollars to start a machine you know that's um you know you don't want to tempt people and so one thing to help cut loss is getting the um taking you know, using tokens or using a card system or using you know just something beside or an app to start the machine so it'll save you a lot of money and it also lowers morale when the other employees know that there's one employee who's pocketing money because they're like why is that you know what and so you don't want that situation at your laundromat now even with the card system even with tokens you've solved the number one problem which is you know theft but the second part is it's not foolproof because they could use that card to start up the machines and, and moonlight you know so my parents came into the laundromat one evening and they saw some some of the employees carrying in bags of laundry into the laundromat and so we've got a night shift that does laundry all night long after the laundromat is closed and we, you know, until six or seven in the morning. And so people were bringing in their own laundry and they were able to start the machines with tokens. So now we track it and we're able to track and we know how much everybody should be spending. So even with the card system, what's great about the card system is you know exactly which machines they use. It should match what they're, you know, when you're doing the machine tracking, those two numbers should match up. So I do recommend machine tracking, even if you have a payment system, but having a payment system besides quarters is step number one to helping avoid, you know, cutting, cutting loss. All right, so folding videos and detergents. So number one regarding the folding videos is People always ask, well, how do you fold your clothes? And the answer is, it doesn't matter how we do it. It matters that you do a good job and that you're consistent. All right. So what I recommend is going to YouTube, finding out how people fold the shirts or pants or sheets, however it is, and finding out how you want to do it and making sure all of your employees are folding the same type of garments the same way. Think about McDonald's. You know, you want your hamburger the same way every time. You don't want it different each time. They're coming to you because of consistency. And if you fold the towels a different way on a different day, then they're going to be like, they did it wrong. Or who was the person who laundered my clothes the first time? That's who I want to launder my clothes. All right. So you want to be consistent. Number two, you see in the background, 
the gods and tide over there. And that's what we use for our laundry. Now, if you're starting fresh, I, Tide is very expensive. And we tried switching away from Tide and our employee, our customers got upset because they liked the smell of Tide. And, and then we had to go back to Tide. But if I was starting fresh, I'd find something that smells good, that people like, that you could always get you know, not some special brand that could go out of business or, you know, you only get it when it's in stock. You want something that you could always get maybe from Costco and that's available and go with that because we're, we're, we're stuck and we would be making a lot more money per pound if we weren't married to Tide. Now, the thing also is Tide is opening up. They already have a lot of cleaners, a lot of laundromats, take up and delivery. They are our competition. And I'm all about the mom and pop laundromats and I want you guys to kick butt. And if you're, and so I don't like feeding the competition. All right. So, um, anyways, that's my spill on that. Uh, so the other part, speaking about feeding the competition, I have to go way, way, way back. Let me go back to pick up and delivery and then I'll move forward again. The fastest growing element in wash and fold in the laundry business is pick up and delivery. No doubt. These numbers don't lie. And you could talk to a lot of people doing pick up and delivery, making crazy money. All right. So you may be getting phone calls. You might not do pick up and delivery, but you may be getting phone calls from other companies that do. And they say, Hey, I see you got a laundromat. Mind getting some free business. I'll give you 85 cents a pound. And if you don't do it, I'll call up your next door neighbor. So a lot of places say, well, it's extra money. You're stealing from your future or you're mortgaging your future, however you want to put it. Because what's happening is you're feeding the competition. You spent a half million dollars or a million dollars on a laundromat, huge capital expense to create this opportunity. And then some person from out of state is now calling you to use your million dollars for free and they're the ones profiting on it, and you're doing the work, no way, don't do it. So if you're getting phone calls like that, that means there's a market for pickup and delivery in your neighborhood. I encourage you to take advantage of it because it's there, and it's better you do it than somebody else. Pickup and delivery is more convenient. It's all about convenience, right? So what's more convenient than going to the laundromat? Pickup and delivery. So if you want to be riding that bandwagon of providing convenience, you want to do pickup and delivery because that's where the customers are at. And that's why we're doing, have our overnight shift is because we got more clothes. Okay, so we talked about detergents. Now productivity. This is a number that you see a lot of different information out there. And a lot of people don't share this information because it's so different and it becomes like a measuring contest. And some people say, oh, we could do 500 pounds during a shift. All right. So, and nobody wants to say they've got a low number. So I'm just going to share our information. We like to get 250 pounds from an employee washing, drying, and folding during an eight hour shift. So 250 is their goal. When we started going above 250, mistakes started happening. So we're happy with 250. Now keep in mind, if it's, and if, if they're working the floor, it's not going to be 250 or anywhere close to it because there's so many distractions. Oh, I need change. I need this. Could you help me with the machine? No, the machine didn't start. Too many suds. Okay. So they're working. Like it, it's hard to do, to have, you can't have these numbers unless they're dedicated to laundering. All right. So this is, we're going to be fighting Mr. Wrinkle. And so one of the ways that we do that is when we pull the clothes out of the dryer, we don't do what I do at home and just throwing all the clothes into the laundry basket. That's a sure way to get a whole bunch of wrinkles because your clothes are hot and then they're cooling down and they're going to, that wrinkle will come with, it'll get crumpled. So to avoid that bunched up clothing, what we do is we bring out these carts with the top shelf and we drape the clothes over the side. And you could also drape the clothes over the side of a table. 
All right, so either way. But as long as you're draping the clothes and not bunching them up, that's the big secret. And we even have customers asking us, hey, did you iron the clothes? They, they're wrinkle free, you know? So, and there's other stuff to it, like how high you, you know, the drying temperature and things like that, you know, things, of course, they get more wrinkled at the hot. So I do medium temperature. And sometimes on some sheets, you'll do low. But this is very important. And then you could see we've got the ticket right over here. So we know exactly whose order we're working on. We're not guessing. So it's everything is very organized. And folding, you want it, you still need to keep the orders separate when you're folding. And make sure you're not mixing up orders because orders could get mixed up at that stage as well. Also, with um with the plastic bags people are always asking us where do we get our plastic bags and so we get ours from sudsy.com and what i like about these bags is they're rectangular and they go deep and what does that help you with it takes up less shelf space all right so so that way you can fit more on the rack the other part is when you put the clothes in there you need to push down on there you need it tight and the bags also from Sudsies come with this like zip tie at top. And that really helps. So we push it down, we tie it in as tight as possible, and we zip it up. And it comes out really nice. Our customers love it. Now, I've also seen people do the shrink wrap. And I'm not a big fan of that just because, one, that those shrink wrap machines look really nice, the finished product. So that's cool. But... It has a hot metal bar across the top to singe that plastic, and your employees could get burned. The second reason is when you open up something that's shrink wrapped, look how tight those bags are. Imagine if you just opened up that bag right over here from the side, what's going to happen to those clothes? They're going to pop out. We see with our bags, they have an opening, they have a top. You open up the bag, it's easy, it works great. But if you're just tearing open the bag and you spent all that time folding their clothes, you know, that's not the best customer experience if they have to refold, um, if they have to refold the clothes. Okay, here are some of our folding tables. I'm just going to go ahead and skip. I'm going kind of long. Tickets. Tickets are very, very important. And now our original tickets are on the top left corner. And the ticket actually looked way worse than that because there's actually a number above the 39 pounds that was crossed out. And if you're the customer and you saw a difference of pounds, it's like, wait, why did the pounds go up? Or why did they go down? And suddenly they're not trusting your weight anymore. So that's the problem. And then who knows if they're coming by in the AM or PM. And then this is a good idea. You need to have the number of packages on your ticket because what winds up happening, I think a lot of you already know this, but the customer comes in to pick up their clothes and you the attendant just grabs the first bag they see, not giving them the second bag. And then they get home and what does the customer think? They think you lost their clothes and they call up in a panic. And then you tell them you got to come back in and grab their clothes. And they're not happy because going back to the Brian Wallace quote, speed, or convenience, it's not that convenient to convenient to drive to the laundromat three times to get your laundry done. So, all right. Also, our tickets that you see right over here, that's what we use now. Um, you could see it shows the preferences right over there. So it says use all free and clear. And going back to detergents, you need to offer some type of free and clear for people who are hyper who are, have allergies. And we get our ticket. These are the thermal ticket rules. And it uses no ink. So it's real easy. And we get them from Cleaner Supply. On the back of these, it has some small print that, and I don't know how legal it is, but, well, it's not illegal, but I don't know if it'll hold up in court, but it still is helpful. It basically says, we are not responsible for more than the cost of your order. All right. And it's just one more arrow on your quiver that you kind of gave somebody notice about your liabilities, and it's right there on their receipt. So I like using these because it's just one additional level of protection. And all right, so those are those are, just, are the tickets. Now the bags. All right, so there's the duffel bags and then there's the laundry bags. These are the bags that we use at Super Suds that we really like. And 
what I like about these is they're putting the dirty laundry into them, as you can see right over there. I mean, that's a lot of money right there. And then we wash the bag. And you could see we wash the bag right there and we fold it and put it in with their clean clothes. So we're not handing them a dirty laundry bag when they come to pick up their clothes. So that to me makes a lot of sense. Second question is what do you put on your bag? Well, I like having your logo, your name of your laundromat or laundry service and your address and phone number. But you also need to put in your website because especially as you get into pickup and delivery, you want them going to the website to schedule a pickup. So your website might not be as important right now if you're not doing pickup and delivery, but you wanna make it easy for them to order and using the same bags. The final thing I've got to say about the bags is you should have separate ones if you're doing dry cleaning, different color. And you should also have internal, one internal colored bag that you don't sell to customers. And we sell these bags for about seven and a half dollars to our customers right now. But the bright orange ones, those we use internally. We don't sell them. Now, why do you, do we not sell the bright orange ones? Because when we just sold the same bag that we used internally, what would happen is we would give away our bags to customers thinking the customer bought it. Or reverse happens too. The customer bought the bag and we keep it thinking it's ours. So when we see a bright orange bag, we know that bag belongs to us. And why would you use your own bags? As I showed you before, sometimes people bring in hampers or they give you bags with holes in them and you need to transfer it to something that protects their garments. So I do recommend having special ones that you use internally. All right, so we're just about to wrapping up. This is uh, dry cleaning. And regarding dry cleaning, these are, our net revenue for, wash, for dry cleaning is in red. The blue is our wholesale cost. So you could see the margins are pretty good, especially considering we're not doing the work. That being said, compared to our overall pickup and delivery volume, these numbers are nothing. I mean, it's just, we're doing it for convenience. Now, why are we doing it? We're really doing dry cleaning because we're doing pickup and delivery and there are certain customers who want their dry clean done at the same time as their wash and fold. And we don't want them using our competitors. We want to be a one-stop shop. And we're driving anyway, so we're just stopped by the dry cleaner on the way back from the route. Now, if we were only doing wash and fold at our laundromat, no way would I do dry cleaning because you're going to have somebody just drop off their dress shirts, which you don't make any money on. That's a lost leader. And and it's going to cost you money. So there's not enough money, in my opinion, to go after. Um, so I'd only do dry cleaning. And when I say do dry cleaning, I mean outsourcing it to a laundromat. And also in our software, because it's made just for laundromats, it's made for a laundromat to outsource their dry cleaning to a dry cleaner. So when you get an order with dry cleaner, dry cleaning, there's a button on there that says send to dry cleaner, at dry cleaner. And you could see exactly which orders are at the dry cleaner and you got wholesale and retail breakdown and it makes it easy to create reports so you know how much you owe the dry cleaner. So really, you really do benefit from using software made for laundromats versus using, you know, restaurant software. Okay, so over here, this is a, referred to as like a helping hand. And th these are, for example, if you need help folding, you could get these on Amazon to help you fold. And our attendants kind of laughed at them because they thought they're really slow and it takes longer to do it that way. For me, can't fold clothes <laughs> at all. This, you know, helps. But, you know, and, and so if you can't fold, there's help out there. Um, so if you're like me, um, there's help. But the overall, if they could do it without those tools, they will be a lot faster. The second one is we've got a client who does a lot of sheets. And what we found when we're doing sheets is they take a long time. And it, we were able to produce more when our launders work together because one person could hold them while they're kind of folding them. And so our productivity actually went up when they're working together. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But they also sell these things called helping hands, and it helps makes it so one person could fold without needing to tie up another person in order to get help. 
Um, there was one slide I missed, which is it's so important to wash orders separately. Um, and, and you need to communicate to your employer, to your customers. Like, well, you don't need to, but um, if they say, hey, why are you more expensive? You could say, well, one thing we do is we wash everybody's orders separately. And then in their back of their mind, they're thinking, oh boy, you know, I don't want to go anywhere else. Um, and you need to consider order minimums. And we do our order minimums based upon a dollar amount, not based upon pounds, because sometimes they give you a comforter and the comforter could be 20 bucks by itself. So I would recommend doing order minimums, especially, you know, like 15 bucks or 20 bucks. And the reason being is, and then on the smaller orders, we'll just sort them by whites and darks. And then on the bigger orders, we sort them by whites, lights, and darks. So, you know, it's just another reason for the order minimum because you're, you're using two machines. You know, that's money. So even if, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. And I also want to thank my brother Aaron because, yeah, he's the one who came up with the idea for this whole webinar. I, you know, we did one webinar on pickup and delivery. And you can find the other webinars at curbsidelaundries.com. And so, you know, so if you're interested in learning about pickup and delivery or how to get commercial accounts or how to price commercial accounts, you know, we've got whole webinars on that. And then we did one webinar on supercharging pickup and delivery with great, great marketing information, just goes really into the nitty gritty. And, um, and then for this, I was thinking, we got to do something even more for pickup and delivery because let's bring it back to basics teach people the fundamentals of wash and fold. And we wouldn't have curbside if it wasn't for him because he's the one who grew the business at SuperSud with, through the website and creating the process and all those things. And, and so I'm very thankful because I, I like what I do. So thank you again for everybody who's, um, who came here and attended. So thank you.